three, two, one, ignition, engine full power, and lift off of Falcon 9, go SpaceX, go Cygnus, NG-21. Good morning on today's special angry bulletin in perhaps one of the worst examples of bad timing and bad coincidences that I have ever seen in the history of space flight. A payload carried by a Falcon 9 appears to have malfunctioned shortly after separation from Falcon 9's supper stage. There's no evidence to suggest that Falcon 9 was responsible for this malfunction. It is instead, most probably, a malfunction on the Cygnus spacecraft that's supposed to be carrying a substantial amount of crucial supplies up to the International Space Station, which, by the way, are being consumed at a much higher rate because of the presence of two additional astronauts who are stuck there because of what's happening with Starliner. And this could also have some significant ramifications for future commercial cargoes carried by Falcon 9 until the FAA investigation is finally completed. All of this and more coming at you on the Angry Astronaut right now. Good morning, and once again, welcome to this special bulletin from the Angry Astronaut, and I'm going to make a quick plug for one of my videos that I just released yesterday. It represents the culmination of over a month spent on Shetland. I really wanted to see the static fire of RFA-1 in all of its glory, and I got an opportunity to do that from less than a mile away. It is the most spectacular engine burn I have ever seen. One of the most spectacular rocket events that I've witnessed, period, simply because I was so damn close. And also, these engines burned for a lot longer than your average static fire from ULA or SpaceX. However, less than 10% of my subscribers have watched, and I'm telling you, you're missing out. Sure, this rocket isn't tremendously powerful, but again, given how close it was, that really doesn't make a difference. It was amazing. The video is linked here and also at the end of this video, so uh, please check in and let's go ahead and get on to the story at hand. In an example of really bad timing that may change at any moment, this is a rapidly evolving story. It appears that the Cygnus resupply ship has malfunctioned during an attempted burn to bring it into the proper orbit to rendezvous with the International Space Station. As I mentioned before, there's no evidence to suggest that Falcon 9 had anything to do with this malfunction. I also watched the launch in great detail no evidence that of any kind of leaking, any sort of accumulation of ice or anything that might have damaged the Cygnus. The fairing separation apparently went just fine. No reason to think that Falcon 9 has anything to do with this malfunction, but still just very bad timing. After the initial launch, there were no updates from NASA or Northrop Grumman after spacecraft separation for several hours. However, communications between between ISS astronauts and mission control indicated that the spacecraft had not performed initial burns to raise its orbit to enable an arrival at the station early on August 6th. In a NASA statement issued nearly six hours after liftoff, the agency said that the spacecraft failed to perform a maneuver called Targeted Altitude Burn, or TBI, 42 minutes after liftoff, quote, due to a late entry to burn sequencing, unquote. The burn was rescheduled for 50 minutes later on the next orbit, but it also did not take place because of a, quote, slightly low initial pressure state, unquote, in the engine. No indication that there's an actual problem with the engine, just some sort of low pressure that's being read by a sensor that 
also could be an error. Now, NASA followed up by saying, quote, Cygnus is at a safe altitude and Northrop Grumman engineers are working a new burn and trajectory plan. And they added that the plan should still allow Cygnus to arrive for a capture by the station's robotic arm at 3.10 a.m. Eastern on August 6th as planned. NASA added that solar array deployment was completed about three hours after liftoff as expected. The Cygnus is carrying almost four metric tons of cargo, including over one and a half metric tons of vehicle hardware, over 1.2 metric tons of science investigations, and just over one metric ton of crew supplies. The hardware included critical spares and new hardware items, according to Bill Spech, who is NASA's ISS operations integration manager at an August 2nd briefing, ranging from spare pump assembly to a urine processing system to a modification kit that will be used for the installation of the final ISS rollout solar array on the station in 2025. The science payloads include experiments studying how spaceflight affects DNA in microscopic organisms and a study of stem cells that could be used to treat blood diseases. Also on board is what Megan Everett, NASA ISS Deputy Chief Science, described at the briefing as a stem unstration or education experiment experiment to demonstrate centripetal force using items in balloons. Now, cruise supplies include some items for astronauts Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams, who have been on the station nearly two months on the Starliner crew flight test mission, as we all know. Quote, we do like to keep our options open, said Spech, a reference to the uncertain return date for the mission. Which, By the way, Starliner, in my opinion, will very likely not be returning these astronauts. Instead, we're going to have a Crew Dragon rescue mission here sometime time in the near future. So the article, by the way, the Space News article that I've been quoting from goes on to say that includes clothes that were taken off Starliner just before launch to make room for spare parts for the station's urine processor assembly. Quote, we have some clothes, we have some personal food items for them, things like that. What is not on Cygnus, though, are Crew Dragon pressure suits for Williams and Wilmore amid speculation that NASA is considering having the two astronauts return home on Crew Dragon rather than Starliner. Apparently, NASA wants to deal with that later. The launch was the second of three Falcon 9 missions that Northrop Grumman procured for Cygnus launches while it works with Firefly on a new version of its own Antares rocket, the Antares 330. That version replaces the Ukrainian-built first stage and Russian engines with a stage developed by Firefly and powered by its own Miranda engines. Ryan Tintner, Vice President of Civil Space Systems at Northrop Grumman hedged on the call when asked if the new Antares would be ready to handle Cygnus missions after the Falcon 9 launch of the NG-22 mission, currently projected for the spring of 2025. Quote, I don't think I can give specific timelines about the readiness of Antares, he said. That is progressing as planned here, and we're on track. Cygnus is a launch vehicle agnostic. We will continue to work with NASA and determine the right launch vehicle after that. So here's why all of this is problematic. Although I am 100% certain that Falcon 9 had nothing to do with this Cygnus malfunction, the fact that Northrop Grumman made the decision to move forward with this launch before the FAA investigation was completed could theoretically lead to problems with their insurance company, assuming that the Cygnus and its payload ends up getting lost. They may have to prove to their insurance company that that the Falcon 9 had nothing to do with the malfunction, that it didn't somehow damage the Cygnus during separation or during the flight, something along those lines. And that might apply to every commercial payload that SpaceX currently has scheduled until the FAA investigation is actually officially complete, especially the next crewed mission that NASA is supposed to be launching in the middle of this month, which doesn't appear to be waiting for the FAA investigation to be complete unless NASA knows that the FAA is probably going to wrap up their investigation by that time. This was just very bad timing. And of course, also, these supplies are very desperately needed on the International Space Station, especially if you consider that a lot of them were earmarked for Butch 
and Sunni. Now, is this actually going to turn out to be a significant problem? Well, no. If Northrop Grumman can solve these issues and get the Cygnus into the proper orbital trajectory, which may have happened by the time you're watching this, as I said, this is a rapidly developing story, then probably no issues whatsoever. But nevertheless, given how sensitive NASA is about the safety of the ISS, especially if we're talking about spacecraft that might have malfunctioning engines, because after all, that's what we've had going on with Starliner, well, it could take a little while before we're 100% certain that Cygnus is going to be docking as planned. I will keep you up to date on all of this. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and please consider supporting this channel on Patreon. Don't forget the RFA static fire linked right here. And as always, stay angry about space.